Today I have a bit of a build video for you guys. I'm going to be making a multi-port USB charger that I can run off of 12 volts. And I'm going to do this using one of these buck converters, a bunch of USB ports, and a couple fuses for safety, as well as a couple of 3D printed parts to enclose the entire thing. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started with this project. All right, so using Autodesk Fusion 360, I went ahead and designed the enclosure for this thing. I started by making a mock-up of the buck converter. As you can see here, it is a very highly detailed mock-up in the form of a square, but it's dimensionally accurate, so I at least know how big the buck converter is, and I can size the case around it. Speaking of sizing the case around it, I went ahead and just drew a rough outline of what I wanted the case to be around our buck converter. And then I made an offset from that original line about a tenth of an inch, and that will form the walls of the case, as you can see here. And then I go back around with the fillet tool, make everything look a little bit nicer. It's also easier to print rounded objects than it is uh, completely square objects. And now I'm working on the lid of the case. So there's a little tab that goes down inside. And with that little tab, I can just put a little bit of glue on the tab, stick this thing together, and then I don't have to use any kind of screws or anything. And usually when I design these cases, I know the tolerances of my printer well enough to the point where they press fit together pretty well. So for the top part of the case, I'm just putting down some guidelines right now so I can figure out where I want to put my USB ports. And I ended up using eight USB ports in total. I used four on each side. In order to make these USB ports, I just put a rectangle down and use the rectangular pattern tool in order to create all eight ports, as you can see here. After that, I went through and extruded all of them. After this, I added a couple holes for LEDs, and I went back through and I added just a little bit of a chamfer to all the edges on the top. And this was to help combat the issue of elephant's foot with your 3D printer. So when this thing gets printed face down, you hopefully have a little bit more of a dimensionally accurate piece. The next thing that I did here was to add the power input jack or the hole for the power input jack. And this took a little bit of tweaking to get it in the spot where I felt that it would work the best. So I kind of messed with this for a little bit. So the next thing I do is lay down some guidelines in order to cut some vents in this box for cooling. And I did this in much the same way I did with the USB ports on the top of the case. I just made one of these and then I used the rectangular pattern tool to create a bunch of them. And then I extrude all but two of them and I missed the two so I wouldn't cut into the uh, power jack. And then I just left those two only on one side as you can see. I added another fillet to help the lid go on easier, and that was pretty much it for the case. So now with the top part of the case printed, I went ahead and inserted all eight of the USB ports, which turned out to be a little bit harder than I was expecting it to be. You can see I'm kind of struggling to push those in. I was kind of afraid of breaking the plastic this entire time as well, but thankfully everything did push in okay, and everything went in quite tightly. Now with as hard as I had to push to get these USB ports in, I thought that I wouldn't have any problems with them pulling out while I was unplugging USB cords from this thing, but after having it built and using a little bit, I have noticed that some USB cords that are really tight, I can pull them out and the USB ports start to come out with it just a little bit. So I'll probably go back through and add just a little bit of glue to every one of these USB ports just to make sure that it can't come out. Anyway, once they're all in there, I went ahead and took a USB cord and just plugged it in and unplugged it from each one of those ports to make sure that everything was okay. So for wiring the USB ports, I went ahead and split my eight ports into two sets of four. The reason why I did this is so I could put a fuse on both sides. So I have one fuse that protects four USB ports and then another fuse that connects the other four USB ports. And with those separate fuses, if I end up blowing out one side of the USB ports, I can still use the other side. Now, ideally what you would do is get some form of poly fuse and put one poly fuse on every USB port. But I didn't have any poly fuses laying around, but I do have tons and tons of regular old school one shot fuses. So I decided to use a couple of normal fuses in this. The fuses that I'm using are three amps. So, 
In theory, they would blow at three amps, but of course there's no such thing as a perfect fuse. So you have to have probably at least four amps flowing through these fuses for an extended period of time before they will actually blow. And with four amps flowing through the fuse, that gives me in theory, the ability to pull one amp through every one of the ports. Now, when it comes to wiring a USB port, the pinout is fairly simple. I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen. And the only thing we're really concerned about with this is the VCC and the ground. And with the way that this is wired, all of the grounds are connected together on the USB ports. And then the VCC on each side gets its own fuse. And then the other ends of the fuses get tied into the buck converter. So you can see here, this wire that I'm about to put in is going to be the link that connects all the grounds of the USB ports together. And I'm gonna put a fuse on each side for the VCC. And then I went through and just made sure I didn't have a VCC short to any of the outside casings because the outside casing on the USB port is of course supposed to be ground. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't shorting that to the positive voltage. And the next thing I do is put a couple of LEDs in this thing. And now it might make more sense why I went ahead and put two LEDs in this thing. So one LED is for each bank of USB connectors. So I just wired the LEDs across one of the USB ports on each side. So of course, if one side of the ports loses power, so does the LED and the LED goes out. Then I added a piece of wire for the main ground and I got a power supply in here and I went through and made sure that everything worked as it should. So I went through and you can see that uh, USB safety tester thing. I just went through and made sure I had five volts on every port and everything worked just fine. So there's the bottom of the case. I just used a little power pigtail to connect the buck converter into whatever power supply it is. So I think that's like a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack. I did go ahead and put some heat shrink over those fuses just to make sure that they don't short against anything inside the case. And then I wired everything into our buck converter. Now with the buck converter, I did go ahead and preset it to be at about 5.4 or 5.5 volts. So. It's a little bit high on the USB charging specification, but usually if you set the voltage a little bit higher, that will account for any kind of voltage drop in, in this case, the fuses or in any of the cabling as well. So now I just went ahead and hooked up the buck converter, made sure all that worked. And then the last step was to go ahead and use every DIY guy's favorite type of glue, which is of course hot glue and secure everything inside the case. So I secured the buck converter and the power input port. And I also use a little bit of glue to hold the case shut. And the very last thing I did to this thing was just take a few little rubber feet that I had laying around and glue those onto the bottom. And that pretty much completes the build of the DIY USB charger. So let's check out our finished product. All right, so this is our finished product and I think it came out pretty nicely. So I printed this in silver because I haven't actually tried the silver uh, PLA before in my printer and it came out quite nicely I think and I chose blue LEDs because I thought it would complement the silver pretty nicely I've got the DC in jack there and I have uh, these things I got a couple of these and I think this is I think these are 2.1 millimeter jacks but anyway it goes from a cigarette lighter plug into the DC jack so I can plug that in like so and use that to power it and let's go ahead and do just that so I'm about to make a very large USB power bank this isn't my actual use case for this either, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and plug a watt meter into this too so we can see how much power we're taking from our batteries. We'll turn that on, and then I'll go ahead and plug this in. I feel like an Apple user having to plug in like 700 dongles just to plug in a USB device, but anyway, plug that in there. And our two blue LEDs on this guy have lit up. And standby current is pretty much not measurable by this meter. So let's go ahead and start plugging some stuff in. I'll also plug this into one of our ports here. I have it set a little bit high. I of course set up the uh, power supply before I ever plugged in anything to it, but I got the voltage set at around 5.45 or so, which is a bit high for USB, but of course, uh, well, I think USB standards go up to five and a half but that'll allow for a little bit of voltage drop in the fuses and things like that, or just as the power supply gets loaded down more. We're gonna charge our USB power banks off of essentially 
a much larger power bank. So this should draw two amps. Yep, there it goes, two amps almost exactly. And you see our voltage has actually already dropped down to 5.23, which is kind of interesting. So I'll plug in another power bank. If you got this one, this one should also draw about two amps. And that's charging now. And our voltage is at 5.11. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but 5.14-ish. Uh, when I plug that one in though, the amperage draw going into this power bank, it went down to about one and a half, so it's charging a little bit slower now. And according to the watt meter over here, we're drawing about 23 watts out of our battery bank, which would mean that we're putting roughly 10 watts into each one of these power banks, on average anyway. So I've got this tablet here, which probably won't take more than an amp to try to charge. Plug that in, I should get a yep, little battery symbol there. Set that down over here. One nice thing about these ports being spaced out so much and having so many of them is that you have enough room to plug in pretty much anything, including these ginormous uh, charger doctor type things. Except for, of course, I'm covering that port. So one interesting thing to note is that this is still showing 5.4 or 6 volts or so on this side, which probably means two things. One, it means that the reason why the voltage over here is so low is because the voltage drop in the fuse, and also it probably means that this tablet isn't actually drawing any current. Maybe I should plug the tablet into the uh, charger doctor deal. For some reason, this thing's really picky about what charger you hook it up to. I don't really know what the deal with that is, but some chargers it works, some it doesn't. So right now, this set of USB ports has about 5.05 volts on it, and the set over here has about 5.4. So the fuses definitely have a bit of a voltage drop to them. And according to this, we are taking 36 watts at the input, which is a reasonable amount of power. About uh, three amps at approximately 11.4 volts. Swap the cables around, maybe it doesn't like the cable. I can also plug in this USB lead just for the fun of it. Let's see, I got 5.1 volts on this side and I've got uh, actually about 5.2 over here now. It looks like this may have came unplugged. So I still have approximately 5 volts on both sides of the uh, USB ports here. And I'm taking about almost 50 watts to uh, charge all these devices. About 4.4 amps and 11.1 volts or so. So that's taking quite a bit of power. This really isn't getting all that warm. Not yet anyway. All right, so I've actually been testing this thing for a little while now, and I can safely say that it works quite well. Now, the thing that actually gets the hottest in this is the fuses, which will lay right up against this side. The buck converter itself remains fairly cool during operation, and honestly, I think the biggest limitation to how much power I can get out of this thing is those uh, cigarette lighter to 2.1 millimeter barrel jack cables. So I think those are only meant to take about three amps, which gives me approximately 40 watts of DC charging, which is plenty. And I've been pretty impressed with how much current this thing can put out. But anyway, I do have one last thing I'm gonna do to this, and that is to add a bit of super glue to every one of these connectors. That's why I have them pulled out right now. So I'm just gonna come along the backside and put a drop of glue on every one of these. I'm not gonna use much at all. Also gonna be very careful not to uh, get any down inside the connector. All right, so I've got a little bit of glue added to each one of those ports. This thing might not look quite as pretty anymore because it'll have a little bit of excess glue around all the ports, but that's all right as long as the ports stay in place. And if you want to try to make one of these things for yourself, I'm going to go ahead and put the files for the case on Thingiverse, and I'm going to try to find links to everything that I used here and put those down in the description. Also, this sort of format with me narrating projects is a little bit different for this channel, and it's probably something that I'm going to have to uh, work and improve upon. But anyway, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave those down below. If you like the project, go ahead and like the video. And if you wanna see more stuff from my channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.